Hey first graders, this week in garden what we're going to do is we're going to talk a little bit about bees and learn all sorts of really cool things about bees in North America. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to get this worksheet out. We are going to get out our garden kits, okay, because we're going to figure out what in our garden kit comes from bees. So see if you can start figuring out what of all these things comes from bees. And then what we're going to get to do is we're going to read a really cool book called The Honey Bee. And I love this book because it's got nice, bright illustrations. Here's Mr. Honey Bee right here. And we're going to learn about what a honey bee does. All right? Because they're working all the time outside. And I'm sure maybe most of us have seen one. Okay? And chances are it might be a little interested in you, but it's doing something. It's going to a job and getting stuff done. So... What we're going to go ahead and do today is we're going to get out this sheet, Bees in North America, okay? And you can see on it, there's all sorts of different bees. So we're going to learn a little bit about them. And that way you guys can head into the world knowing all sorts of cool facts about bees and some of the different types of bees out there too, because they're not all honeybees. Just like I know sometimes a lot of our books are about honeybees and the movies. If you, if you watch the bee movie, that's about a honeybee too. Okay, but there's all sorts of different types, so we're going to learn about them. All right, so grab your sheet, grab your garden kit, and let's get started. All right, so today what we're going to do is we're going to talk a little bit about bees and some of the cool things that make bees an awesome part of our environment. So as you can see, this is the worksheet we're going to be working on. If you don't have it, you can just grab a sheet of paper and color along, okay? The first thing we're going to do is we're going to color in the area of North America, which is where we live because this is where we are gonna be talking about how bees are important. Bees are actually, they were brought over from Europe. They're not native to North America, which means they didn't originally start here. Humans brought them over in the 1800s, okay? And so North America, you can see is here. So we're gonna color in North America from our world map here. So that's kind of where we're talking about the bees today. All right, you can see this is South America here. This is North America, so it's mainly the United States. Canada's up here. Okay. All right, so we've gone ahead and colored in North America. And we are going to talk a little bit about the honeybee, but we're also going to talk about the other types of bees that there are. So honeybees are the ones that make the honey. So in your garden pack, if you went ahead and looked in your garden kit, okay, Chances are you found something that was made from bees. Can you see it? Oh, it's a big, orange, bright pack of honey. All right, so I wanted to make sure everybody had a little honey. Now, if you've never tried honey before, please talk to your adult before you, you open this up and taste some, okay? Because some people can be allergic to it, and I want to make sure that, that we're all eating and tasting responsibly. So we've gone ahead and gotten out our little honey kit. Honey bees make honey. But not every bee is a honeybee. There are different types of bees, okay? And so you can see down here, I gave you some different types of bees. And these aren't sized correctly. I made the honeybee a little bit bigger than the other ones. It's normally, it's the same size as a lot of other ones. Bumblebees can be a little bit bigger and fatter, all right? So what we're gonna do is we are gonna take a pen or a pencil, it's up to you, and we're gonna go over the trace letters of the different types of bees, okay? And learn a little bit about them. So the first one here, this is a honeybee. So honeybees, they have hives, okay, and they make honey. Those are the two, two big things we need to know. And normally when we're looking at bees out and about around in our neighborhood, chances are you're going to find honeybees because that is their job. They're out there. They're traveling. They're looking for nectar and pollen okay, to bring back to their hive to make honey. So honeybees. We're going to go ahead and work over our trace letters. Perfect. And write that in. All right, so honeybee. Next up, the next type of bee that we're going to talk about is the bumblebee. And bumblebees are what we call solitary bees. So they do not live in a hive. They essentially kind of live by themselves. All right. They will be raised by So they live by themselves. They are called a solitary bee. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and write bumble bee. And bumblebees tend to live in, they'll live in the ground, in little holes in the ground. They don't live in a hive. They'll maybe live in some rotten wood. 
Pele live in various places, but they won't have that hive with other bumblebees there. Another really cool bee that we're going to get to look at is the mason bee. And you can tell, is this bee yellow and black like we, we normally believe all bees are? No! It's kind of got this metallic look to it. They're pretty cool. They almost look, if you've seen like a housefly that has kind of that shimmer to it, this almost looks more like that. It looks closer to that than it does a honeybee. So this is a mason bee. And mason bees are really, really great. Gardeners love mason bees because they're one of the first bees out when other bees are kind of still sleep in wintertime and it's cold. And they're in that diapause, remember, which is like a hibernation. The mason bees wake up earlier. And so they're the ones pollinating like plum trees and cherry trees, all these things that they have these beautiful blossoms that start blossoming right as soon as the weather starts turning warm. The mason bees are the ones that are really awake and they're getting out there and pollinating those buds. Okay. And mason bees are cool because they're not going to, they don't actually sting. It's only, um, one of the gender stings and the other one does not even have a stinger. So chances are, if you see a mason bee, you're usually not going to get stung. It's really hard to get stung by a mason bee. And then last up, up top here, you can see this beautiful color. So this is an orchid bee and an orchid is a tropical flower. Okay, so this bee, chances are, lives in warmer tropical climates and helps pollinate orchids, okay? But you can see these are only four types of bees. There are tens of thousands of different types of bees in the world. So this is just a little sampling of them. So the more we know, right, that one, bees don't have to be yellow and black, like a mason bee and an orchid bee, okay? They can be different colors. Two, bees don't have to sting, all right? That's another great thing we learn. And then three, that one type of bee, the honeybee makes honey, but bumblebees don't make honey, okay? Orchid bees, mason bees don't make honey. So that's a great thing to know too. Not all bees make honey, all right? But for those that do, that those that live in a hive, there's one shape that's really, really important to honeybees. And so I put it on here. It's this shape here, okay? So what I want you to do is I want you to count how many sides this shape has and then see if you can tell me what this type of shape is called. So I've got one, two, three sides, four sides, five sides, six sides. I'm gonna put a big six in the middle. All right, so can anybody tell me what shape has six sides? It's right under this in trace letters. It's called a hexagon. H-E-X-A-G-O-N, hexagon. So a hexagon is a shape that has six sides and it is one of the most efficient shapes to make a hive out of. So these bees have figured out, right, that with circles there might be some waste. With squares they might not have been able to fit quite as many. So bees have evolved to figure out that the hexagon is the most efficient, so that means there's not a lot of waste, okay, shape that they can build their hive out of, which is so cool that these bees know that. All right, and then the last thing we're gonna do is it's honey time. So on the sheet here, I went ahead and I gave you, this is what normally like a beehive looks like. They call it an apiary, which is where, um, if you have an apiary, it's basically lots of these hives in boxes and you're, you're harvesting the honey and, and taking care of the bees that grow the honey, the honey bees. So if you want to, okay, if your adult says it's okay, you can go ahead and break open your packet Okay, you can either cut this open or kind of wiggle it back and forth and taste your honey. And then we're going to think of some words that we can use to describe honey. What does it taste like? What does it feel like? I, re I do not recommend getting your fingers in here, right? Just, just use your noggin and think about if you happen to spill it once, what did it feel like? And then what other words could we tell somebody that could be used to tell somebody about honey? Okay, so I want you to think about that and then you're going to write them down here, okay? I can think, what does honey taste like to me? Well, is it sour? No, it's not really sour. I would say honey is sweet, right? We put it in tea sometimes. We can put it, sometimes we can add it to cookies, okay, to make them a little sweeter. We can add it to a peanut butter sandwich to give it a little sweet kick, right? So sweet is a really good one. 
And then we can also say if we happen to touch it or we got it on a table like right here, right? And we got it on our fingers, would it be really, what would it feel like? It's sticky, right? Yeah, it's sticky. And then is it rough? Is it smooth? I think it's pretty smooth. Okay, so maybe that's another word. Perfect. All right, so now we've gone ahead and we have gotten some of our words that we're using to describe, okay, what honey tastes like. We've gone ahead and we've gone over the types of bees here. So now you know that there is not just honeybees out there, right? There are all sorts of different types of bees that do different jobs, okay? We've gone over how important hexagons are to hive building, right? And we've gone ahead and said, we're talking about bees in North America right now. And again, the honeybee is not native. It wasn't originally born here. It was brought over to North America. But as we look at different types of bees in the next uh, video or two, we're gonna be talking about bees in North America and how they're important and what they do. All right, so next up, we're gonna learn a little bit about mason bees. All right, okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna talk a little bit about mason bees because I have this lovely house. Now, some of you guys might be thinking this looks like a birdhouse. It does a little bit, right? It's got the roof. Maybe, I don't think a bird could fit in there though. And a bird definitely isn't gonna go in here. What this is, is a mason bee house. So if you've been on a walk in your neighborhood and you're out and walking down the street and you look into somebody's yard or on the side of a building, you might see something like this. And this is specifically designed for mason bees. And so what it does, you can see it's kind of got a little hole in the back. That's where we mount it. Okay, and then it sits there. And this has bamboo pieces in it. And this is what the mason bees use to come out of their cocoon and they will do their pollination and then they will use mud. Okay, so they actually sell some mud sometimes if you don't have mud around your house, special mud that they can use to build their cocoon back up again. But mason bees don't need a hive. This is all they need. So they come out of these little pieces of bamboo, okay, that they can kind of burrow into and they work on pollinating. So what we're going to do today is we're going to take the little mason bee cocoons that I have, okay, and you can see I kind of put them in my little bowl here. It's cold because they've been in my fridge. Because when the nursery sells this, the nursery sold it to me. This is 10 little mason bee cocoons. If you want to keep it so that the mason bees don't hatch right away, you keep them in their fridge because that's like winter to them, right? They think it's cold, they think it's winter. They're gonna stay in their cocoon until it's nice and warm. So you guys, what we're gonna get to do today is we are gonna load our mason bee house up with our mason bee cocoons. And then we're gonna watch these hatch. And some of you guys are fortunate enough, two years ago, we got some of these in the garden room. And these I just took out of the fridge. You can see that's why the kind of the bowl is a little bit, has some condensation on it. But they hatch pretty fast. As soon as it hits around 70 degrees, they'll start hatching. I know my mom had some of these in her car she was bringing back from the nursery and she kind of forgot and ran some errands. And by the time she was midway through driving home, the little cocoons had started hatching. But again, if you remember, mason bees are special because they don't stink, which is great. So it's not like you have these things flying around in your car, or wherever you are, right, that, that you have to worry about. These guys really won't sting. You have to almost like pop them for them to squeeze, for them to uh, sting you. <clears throat> so what we're gonna do, I'm gonna switch to the document camera, okay? And we're gonna go ahead and put some of the cocoons in our Mason Bee house and then put it outside and see and have them hatch and get to work because I have some cherry trees that definitely I'd love to see some fruit on. And for there to be fruit, those flowers need to be pollinated. All right. All right, so you can see here, I've got my Mason Bee house. Okay, and again, there are all these little bamboo tubes and these are perfect for our Mason Bee cocoons. So these are the mason bee cocoons. There are 10 of them. This is the box that the nursery sells them in. So really they come in this teeny little box. It says, normally you refrigerate the cocoons in the box until day temperatures are above 53 degrees and the blooms are open, okay? And so you can go ahead and put them in your 
box and have them ready to go. So this box holds 10 cocoons, four females and six males. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna kind of just gently place these here. Okay, so they're ready to go. And then I'm just gonna, you can use your hand, okay? The cocoons, you have to be really nice and gentle, okay? And you're just gonna kind of drop them in the little tubes so they're ready to go. You don't wanna have them stick out that much. Okay, and they won't hurt you. It's just finding, finding the right spot for them. Okay, being nice and gentle. And then what's gonna happen is I'm gonna put this outside and right now, we're pretty fortunate that it's starting to warm up. So the temperatures are gonna be warm enough that they will be ready to go. Let's see, did I put one in there already? I can't remember which ones I put one in there. I don't think I did. Let's look at that back. That big guy can go there. And then this is a little guy, so it's gonna go in the middle one. So now I have my 10 mason bees in here. Okay, they've all got their home ready to go. Again, what happens is they're gonna go out, they're gonna find some trees to pollinate, they're gonna work, 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 work. And then they're gonna start building some mud back in here. So that's the only other thing you really need to have around is some mud, okay? And so I actually have some mud that I'll put right outside where I hang this in my yard. And then the mason bees will be able to get a little mud and come up here and kind of put it back in these little bamboo things as they build their cocoons and get ready for their hibernation again after they're all done pollinating for, for a month or two. All right, you guys, nice work.